right, so I'm gonna try and uh, show you how I make a thin natural edge bowl. We're gonna take this from this two and a half, two and three quarter inches down to an eighth of an inch. And notice where I have this light position. You're gonna see the light, since this is wet green wood, uh, transmit through the wood. And I'm actually gonna turn to a shade, but I'm gonna do it in one cut. Um, and that's gonna help me guide and steer the tool. I'm actually gonna use part of the wood to stabilize and strengthen itself. And as I remove that support, I'm gonna be heading back to my support back here. We gotta do it in one cut. The big trick for these is holding the tool in the same place as it comes out of the wood, it's naturally it's full, and it enters in on the other side because if there's any movement of that tool, you get these little lines, you can sand them off, but um, if we can avoid that, we obviously want to. But before we get started, are you old, like over 50 degrees? Are you angry? You should try Tylenol. <laughs> it helps make old people nice again. All right, so I'm gonna get this run pretty darn quick uh, towards the upper end of sink. So, get this guy going. I've already checked my chuck tightness. He's good and tight. The faster it goes, the less dwell time I have between the loads. So the easier it's gonna be for me. So, uh, hand underneath the tool, thumb right behind the bevel there. I'm going to have that flute perpendicular to the floor. I'm just going to ease that cutting edge in, get my cut started, open up the gouge about 30 degrees, and then cut down for the center. I'm only going to cut down about a third because I want to leave the bottom of that bowl there to support what I'm doing. You want you to use an overhanding grip for a little bit more powerful of a cut. This is nice, super soft silver maple. It literally was a tree about um, an hour ago. Well, now, as I'm starting to cut, I'm looking through the side here. You can probably see it from your vantage point, and I want to get that thickness running true now. Um, that way all I have to do is remove the same amount of wood each time and I'm always getting the same cut. Alright, I don't want to get that too thin down here because I'm removing some of my support. One more cut and that's going to be the money cut. So since this is the cut that's going to matter, um, I'm going to go sharpen a tool here. That is, this is three. So I've switched to a smaller tool. It's going to give me a finer cut, and this thing is bleeding sharp. So what I'm going to do, you can see it's about, oh, maybe three-eighths of an inch thick. I'm going to take a good two-thirds of that off. The piece that I'm taking off is going to support the cut, and what's going to be left over is an eighth inch. And that should be an eighth inch throughout this edge when I get her done. So let's spin this guy up and see what we get. Alright, here we go. Here's the money cut. See, that's an even shade, so my thickness is pretty even. And that's what that light does. So, and the rest of this, it's down beneath the bark, so this is just a regular bowl at this point. I'd haul it from normal weight. I actually start from the center and start hollowing out to the edge as opposed to punching down in towards my support. And that's it.